oh my god this book was just totally insane and absolutely amazing Lovers, Victoria here and you're watching my books and me. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Dead House by Dern Kurtajic. 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 And I was kindly sent this book for review from Hatchet Australia and I am so glad that I requested this book because it was absolutely amazing. This is a debut novel and it was just so fantastic and just so totally amazing. So this book is really hard to explain. I wrote a re I finished this book last night and I wrote a review for it on my blog, which I will link to below. But I had so much trouble trying to summarize the book without giving too much away because I feel like this is the kind of book that you need to read knowing very little about it. Um, otherwise, it's going to lose impact and you're not going to go on such an amazing journey with the book. This book is part psychological thriller, part urban legend, and it is just really well written. I have read None. I have literally read no other psychological thrillers in my life before, but it was absolutely amazing and I really want to read more. So if you know any psychological thrillers that I would enjoy, then tell me in the comments below because I am just really excited to check things out. This book is essentially a police file. That's kind of what it's what it is. And it is made up of a series of diary entries, video transcripts, interview transcripts, emails and notes, newspaper articles, um psychologist yeah, psychologist notes, um, police notes, sort of stuff like that. And it all revolves around the Johnson incident, which was where Elmbridge High School burnt down, three people were killed, 20 people were injured, and Carly Johnson went missing. And this is all 20 years after the event happened. The event happened in 2005, and this is sort of in 2000, and what are we up to? 25. 2025, when police have just discovered the diary of Caitlin Johnson. Now, what happens is Carly apparently suffers from dissociative identity disorder or multiple personality disorder. I say suffers because it's really open to interpretation when you read the book, whether you truly believe that's what happened or it's some paranormal shit that goes down. Um, but either way, it's just a really cool, <laughs> either way, it's just a really interesting idea for the story, really interesting concept to follow. What it is, is Caitlin's diary entries in the lead up to the Johnson incident um, from the start of September when she returns to school to I think it's January or February the following year when the event takes place. Now Carly has been in Clayton Mental Hospital to treat the um, the mental the, the dissociative identity disorder because her psychologist believes that she invented the altar Carly after her parents died as a coping mechanism. Now it's really interesting Carly is present during the day and Caitlin is present during the night and they they communicate with each other they leave notes and things for each other and it has been apparent that it has been going along a lot longer than their parents death as they were around as as Caitlin was around during when their parents were alive and everything and their little sister Jamie can differentiate immediately who is currently in the body. It is kind of like two souls in the same body and they're kind of like sisters. It's a really, really interesting concept to cover and it was such a really interesting part of the story. Now, I don't really want to say too much more about what happens in the story because you definitely have to discover that for yourself. There are some events that go down um, that are really interesting. There is some crazy stuff that happens. It is a totally wild ride. I literally did not know what was happening for a majority of the book, which I think was a good thing because then at the end when everything is just getting laid into place I was like holy crap why did I not notice all this before it is such a unique story that sort of leaves you speechless when you finish it and you're really unsure about what happened and it is definitely a story I think that is going to stay with you for a while I definitely feel like I'm going to be thinking about it for a lot because it was just it was just really really good so as I said this is the first psychological thriller that I've read Every chapter brought up these new questions and just when you thought you had the answer, there is this little plot twist that is thrown in and suddenly you're back to square one, you have no idea what's happening, but it wasn't like I was lost. I mean, I was lost and totally confused, but it wasn't like I was lost and was going to put down the book. This book gripped me from the first page and had me hooked the entire way through. I just needed to know what was going on because 
there was just these little events that were happening and you just had to know what was happening and you had to finish the book. The book, the book, now the book didn't go where I expected it to go. Where you think it's going to go at the start of the book, you know, I thought I had the story planned down. I thought I knew what was going to happen. But it just, it just changed direction completely. And I really enjoyed the direction it went. It was not what I was expecting. And I really liked the ending. The ending, the last quarter of the book, okay, okay, so the last about quarter, maybe third of the book, is just where everything went down, everything was just happening. Every new chapter brought like some new crazy event and you were just like, oh my god, what is happening? Like everything you thought you knew about the world of the book was completely changing and it was just amazing. And the ending was just, it was really, it was kind of a really beautiful ending. It was like crazy and creepy, but it was really beautiful. This book is insanely beautifully written and it was just, I'm still totally unsure about about what happened and how it happened but it was just so good what I really like about this book is that there are actually still questions that need to be answered but it's done in a really good way like I said this is like it is meant the book is meant to be a police file and that's what you're reading because there are little notes placed in between each of the evidence uh, why did I do that there are yeah because there are little police notes inserted in between all the, the evidence that sort of gives what the police think. And the end of the book goes after the incident where they're um, sort of just recapping what happened, what happened to all of the suspects involved, um, and everything like that. And it talks about how there is an online community of like Johnson, Johnson fans, I think that's what they called, you know, who are really dedicated to trying to unsolve, unsolve trying to unriddle the secrets of the case and discover what really happened um, because mo li literally no one believed that Caitlin and Carly were two separate people everyone just thought she has multiple personality disorder she's she's also psychotic and there was only very few people who actually believed that believed the story so 20 years down the track you know you get a recap of the case you get told where all the what it, you, t you get told all about the different witnesses, um, who goes to jail, who doesn't go to jail, who gets admitted and stuff like that, where some of the dead bodies were found. Um, and you were then told about these Johnson fans who are like an online community trying to, un un trying to unriddle the secrets of the Johnson case and learn about what really happened. It's kind of like Jack the Ripper. There are heaps of Ripperologists 130 years later who are still trying to figure out who Jack the Ripper was, but we're never going to know because there is just not enough evidence. Same thing here. There are all these fans trying to figure out what happened, but there is just... There's no real solid evidence about what's really happening. So I feel like there's unanswered questions because of that. And it's a really it's a really interesting way in the fact that this is kind of meant to be an urban legend. This could have happened. This book, say, could be a real thing, and you've got all these unanswered questions that you're left with because no one knows the full story. And I just I find that a really interesting aspect of the book. Obviously, some people might not be okay with unanswered questions and be like, oh, I want a sequel. But that would ruin this book. If you got the questions answered, I don't think the book would have been as interesting and wouldn't have really been such an urban legend. It it was just a really interesting aspect of the book that I found really, really intriguing, really interesting, and just a really great ending to the book. Overall, I gave this book five out of five stars. I could not put it down. I really enjoyed it. It had me, like I said, had me gripped from the first couple of pages. Everything was going crazy. I, like I said, I still don't really know what on earth happened. I was speechless after I finished it. I, it was just, it was absolute madness. It was an insane roller coaster ride, and you have to experience it for yourself to be able to understand how why this book is so good. This book has received really, really great reviews. It is definitely a great creepy Halloween read. There were some parts in it where I was just like, oh my god, what is happening? One of my updates that I did on Goodreads was what the actual F is happening because I was just, everything was happening, and I was like, oh my god. And literally last night when I was finishing it, I think I read about the last third of the book in about two hours because I couldn't put it down. Everything was happening. Everything was crazy. And it was just, this book is so good. I highly recommend it to anyone out there. If you love psychological thrillers, paranormal, urban legends, 
creepy crazy stuff if you really want to give your mind a workout and totally F it up then read this book Dawn is also releasing another book next year. We currently don't know the title or the synopsis, but I am super excited for it because this book was so, so good. I'm so excited to see what else she brings out. She definitely has psychological thriller under her belt. She, I don't know how, to be honest, I don't know how she's going to top this book because it was just so good. <sighs> So yeah, if you couldn't tell, I really like this book and I want you all to read it ASAP. So that is it for today's video. I will leave a link below to my um, written review of The Dead House as well as the Book Depository and Goodreads links. I'm also going to link to Dawn's YouTube channel because she's kind of like a booktuber kind of, I don't know, go check her out because she is really, really fun. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook and Instagram because I post regularly all over there and it's really fun. During October, I've also been doing the October photo book challenge over on Instagram. I've nearly finished that, but go check it out anyway. And I'm possibly going to be doing a November photo book challenge, possibly if I can find a good one. Also, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you like what you see. I bring new videos every Wednesday and Saturday and I've got some good videos coming up over the next couple of weeks that you should definitely stick around for. Also let me know in the comments below if you've read The Dead House and what you thought of it. I do really want to know what other people thought of it and also let me know some more psychological thrillers because I'm super keen to get some creepy psychological thrillers in my life. Other than that I'll see you guys very soon on Wednesday actually with my Halloween recommendations for Top 5 Wednesday. See you guys then. Bye.